What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fight Exchange presented to you by Prediction Strike. I, unfortunately, am your solo host today, your boy Clint, as always. My guy David, unfortunately, had some uh, some, some personal stuff going on. He's not going to be able to make this week. Don't you worry. We will be right back to our bi-weekly schedule with my guy right about here in this general vicinity in two weeks so don't worry he will be back but today i've got nobody to argue my opinions so you're getting just straight up hot clint facts right off the table we are going to talk about all the fighters at ufc 288 real quick we are going to talk about long-term and short-term investments using the prediction strike platform do me a favor first and foremost hey welcome to the channel subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button for me Next, I need you to go over to Prediction Strike. If you're watching this video, you either like fighting and you have Prediction Strike and you're already playing with us, or you like fighting and you like UFC 288 and you don't know what Prediction Strike is. If you're in the latter category, jump on Prediction Strike, throw a deposit in there, use promo code FE, that is for the Fight Exchange. Let them know that we sent you over there to you. I say we like my guy David is still here with me. I'm lonely. I'm lonely with that empty space over there so <laughs> let them know that we sent you over when you deposit i believe you get a free stock of an athlete with that deposit just so you know prediction strike is offering a deposit promo code at the moment you get a free share of, an, of a random athlete for every 25 dollars in your deposit up to five thousand dollars so that's right if you deposit a hundred bucks use promo code fe you're gonna get four count them Four for each $25 a free of an athlete on the site, capped at $5,000. So go nuts, guys. Get in here, play some of these long-term and short-term games with us. Let's get straight on into it. UFC 288 is a massive card. Unfortunately, we've lost one or two fights, and it's still huge. First fight of the night, Claudio Roberio, who is sitting at 83 cents, is taking on Joseph the ugly man holmes and uh i actually really like this fight i'm gonna have a tough time picking a winner here in this spot because i can see avenues to victory for both guys with prediction strike the way the platform works you're looking for long-term investments you're looking to buy in on a fighter who's a very short price tag who we know is going to have some longevity in the ufc and title shots finishes those are the things that drive the numbers up through the roof. So you want somebody who's got that high upside that people just don't know about yet. It's like finding a sleeper in fantasy football. So we're looking at Joseph Holmes. We're looking at Claudio Ribeiro. And we're trying to decide to either one of these guys hit that moniker for us here. Ribeiro is 83 cents per share. Joseph Holmes, 74 cents per share. And I think that Claudio Ribeiro has the, uh, well, I don't want to say the higher ceiling, it's a striker versus grappler matchup, and I do think Claudio definitely has finishing upside. We've seen the ugly man finish before. He's so tall. He's so long. He's so gangly. That front leg is going to be there to get chopped at. I think that we are looking at a knockout situation here for Claudio Ribeiro. However, if this fight hits the ground, Joseph Holmes has such a slick ability to find the back. He's got great jujitsu. That's his best attribute, in my opinion. I do think he can win this fight by submission. So this is really a spot that I'm personally not interested in, in getting into from a long-term perspective because both these guys could win their fights on Saturday and both these guys might actually be around for a while. I'm not sure how high either of their ceilings are, though. I do believe they're both relatively capped. This is a pretty low-level fight. From a UFC perspective, neither of these guys are going to be contenders. Neither of these guys are going to be champions. Honestly, I know I'm supposed to drive as much action as I can to Prediction Strike. That's like literally the point of the show. But I don't think either of these gentlemen are worth your long-term investments here in this spot. So I would say pass. I'm going to pick Claudio Ribeiro to win the fight, but it's not going to shock me if it goes the other way. The second fight on the card, Zalgas Zumagulov makes his glorious return to the cage, and he is taking on UFC newcomer Rafael Esteban. And I, I've got such a hard time with this fight as well. Honestly, folks, we can probably save 
just a little bit of time here on this fight. This is a one and done situation. The only fighter that you can invest in moving forward here is going to be Rafael Esteban. He's a dollar and 24 cents per share. You know, it's interesting because a lot of these fighters come in right around or just under a dollar. This guy came in just above a dollar and is already up 12%. So the market is telling you that they already like Rafael Esteban in this spot. Zalgas Zumagulov, I do think he's live to win on Saturday. I think he's got skills. I he know he's got the experience advantage here. He's fought the much higher caliber competition. However, he retired after his last fight. He took a couple bad split decision losses and literally hung up the gloves. He could just be done after this fight. So if he wins, he's the underdog. That's great. Maybe he sticks around. But if he gets robbed by the judges one more time, he might be like done done and completely walk away from the sport. Personally, I don't need to tie up funds, especially long term on a fighter like Zalgas, who may not be there in a couple of months. I'm not entirely sure what we have here in Rafael Esteban. But if you're going to play prediction strike on this fight, he's the only fighter long term that I think you've got any options for when it comes to investment. The next spot up is Ikram Ali Ashkov taking on Phil Hawes. And, uh, you know, fans of my podcast, people that listen to me doing shows here, you know, I don't like Phil Hawes. I, I think Phil Hawes is a bit overrated. He's got a decent skill set. He's got everything that you want to see, but he finds ways to lose. I don't know that he's got the heart in the game. I don't know if his durability is all the way what you need it to be. Now, Ali Ashkarov is not somebody I'm sold on either. He was a throwaway on the Contender Series. The UFC did not sign him. He went to Eagle FC, and now he's back making his debut. So he's $1.29 a share. He is a Russian fighter. He runs with the right guys. I do think he probably wins the fight against Phil Hawes on Saturday. So if you're looking for you know some upside here, I think Ashkram is probably the side at $1.29 a share. It's a little bit higher of a price point than I personally would want to use to get involved in a fighter like this because, again, I'm not sure just how high that ceiling really is. Phil Hawes is only $0.76. Cents. He's been with the UFC for like five years now, and he's still only $0.76. Cents. It's been an up and down run. He's obviously not getting into the contender circle. The finishes do help. You know, they do bump his price tag up, but he would have to go on some kind of a run to get you a return on your investment here at $0.76. Cents. Frankly, folks, Phil Hawes is a big underdog on Saturday. If you are looking to back him, I don't think he has long-term value. Go find a betting line. This would be a spot where I actually say, you know, go out there, find plus money, get you plus 165 on Phil Hawes, smash and grab on Saturday on a regular betting line. This is not the spot for him. If you're playing on prediction strike and you want some long term, you want to dump some investment in and then come back in a little bit after two, three fights and have a big return, Ikram Aliashkov is going to be the guy that I would suggest putting that investment on. Next up, we have got Parker Porter, and he is welcoming yet another UFC newcomer in Braxton Smith. Parker Porter is another one of these cases where he is 81 cents even after being around here for quite some time. The UFC newcomer Braxton is only 56 cents. And you see that super interesting little squiggly line movement there here on prediction strike. It's interesting because the market isn't quite sure what to make of this guy. Now, he's super limited. He reminds me a lot of Will Knight where it's just solid muscle. All he's going to do is try and bank you one good time and put you down. He's got five wins, all five by round one KO. You can watch this guy's entire three-minute career on YouTube right now if you want to go look for those fights. He's taking on Parker Porter, a man who's got him outskilled in every aspect of the fight game, but a guy who simply dies in the first round. I can't recommend investing on Parker Porter. He might be around a little bit longer, but he's 38 years old. He's not a guy, I think, who has a very high ceiling. He'll have a couple more fun fights, and then he's probably done. I don't know if I can in good conscience tell you to actually invest in Braxton Smith. You know, the problem for me, he's 56 cents. It's rare on Prediction Strike that you get somebody at 56 cents. If they softball match make him, he can put a two or three fight win streak together, and you might see a half decent return on your money because of the super low buy in price tag here. Out of these two fighters, it's going to be Braxton if I'm going to invest in either of them. And this is a very terrifying fight if you're going to have any kind of money in on it because Braxton, if he doesn't get the win on Saturday, he could drop down to 40 cents a share and then get booted from the UFC with just one more loss or something like that. So this one does kind of set up to me. I 
really my brain is telling me that Parker Porter is probably the guy that you should be backing in this spot. But the little hairs on the back of my neck are telling me the round one one punch guy is probably just going to do the damn thing and get it done. The next fight up, one with uh, a little bit more implication here, is Marina Rodriguez. Rodriguez, she is Brazilian. I can throw the H in there. She is $3.16 per share. Now, she's been hovering around the contender circle for quite some time. You know, we thought she was going to get the title. I thought she was going to get to the title at some point. But that grappling disadvantage that she has, her inability to get off her back, it's just turned into such a problem. She can't get anybody off her. And it's kind of capped her ceiling here in the division at this point. She's also older to the point where I don't know that she's going to be making very many improvements at this stage of her career. Verna Janjarobo, on the other hand, $2.03. She's a grappling phenom. You know, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is off the charts. Her wrestling is solid, very physically strong. It's another striker versus grappler situation. Verna's got decent pop in her hands. She's got decent power. I think she can hit hard enough to gain the respect on the feet. But when we're on the ground, it's going to be one-way traffic for Verna Janjaropa. I think she's definitely the side here. $2.03, it's a little high. You know, maybe my guy would uh, disagree with me here if he was on the show today. But what I like to do on Prediction Strike is, like I said, find those gems, buy in super low, and then forget you put your money there, come back in a while, and see the profits piling in. I'm not really looking to invest in someone like Verna at $2.00 and three cents. Do I think she's a title challenger? Unfortunately, no, no, I don't. She's 34 years old. That means she's going to be hitting the end of her prime. She's going to be struggling moving forward very, very quickly here in a short matter of time. So I don't think she's necessarily a long-term investment. However, is she going to beat two or three girls in a row at this stage? Yes, yes, she is. So if you don't mind eating just a little bit of chalk here, I do think Verna's probably the side. I actually think uh, Marina Rodriguez might be a little overpriced at this point at $3.16. Maybe she shuts me up with a big win on Saturday and she goes on and fights for the title and gets up in the $4 range. But I think she's a tough, tough ask to invest in someone like Marina at this stage of her career. Once again, everybody, this is the fight exchange we're talking 288. Do me a favor, please hit the like button. If you're in the comments section, let me know who your favorite fighter stock is, who you've invested in already. Let us know. And of course, like I said, deposit, use promo code FE here with Prediction Strike. Next up, we've got Chaos Williams making his return to the UFC. I've been waiting so long to see this guy back in the cage. 97 cents per share, taking on Rolando Bedoya, who is just a meager 40 cents. 40 cents on Rolando Bedoya. Wow. So if you're looking for a buy low spot, there you have it. It doesn't get much lower on this website than 40 cents. However, I am very firmly in the camp of Chaos Williams. Now, he's a little bit older, and he's also somebody who's taking steps to prepare his after UFC life. He is working on outside investments, things like that. That's kind of scaring a couple of people off out there, especially in the Twitter sphere. For me personally, I don't think it's much of a problem. For me personally, I think it's a good idea for these fighters to get set up because there is a life after fighting, believe it or not. But he's got the one punch death touch power. That's going to drive his price tag up. He's already fought against decently high level competition like Randy Brown. He's proven he belongs to the contender circle. I don't know that he gets a title shot necessarily, but I'm not going to cap the guy. I'm not going to put a limit on his uh, future potential at this point because I think there's lots of room to grow and improve. He's a freak athlete. He's physically strong. I like chaos. This is definitely a spot where, especially at under a dollar, I'd be looking to take some shares of Chaos Williams. And I do think he wins probably in stunning fashion on Saturday. Next up, we got Devin Brown Bear Clark, who's a dollar and seven cents, alternating wins and losses in the UFC basically since he got here. Kennedy in Chukwu, who's a dollar and eleven cents. So these guys are actually pretty close when it comes to the price tag here for their investment. Now, I think it's interesting that Kennedy actually opened up on the betting line as a slight underdog in this spot. Since then, it's been all money on Kennedy coming in. It's flipped him to being like a minus 200 favorite. Personally, a little bit rich. I think it's just a tad bit too much here in this spot. We've seen what happens when Devin Brown Bear Clark gets his meat paws on somebody. He absolutely grinds the life out of them, pins them up against the fence, slows the pace of the fight down, gets it done by decision almost every dang time. Kennedy's going to have a huge height and reach advantage. We saw his big step in knees come into play against Ion Kutalaba. He's got the tools that he's going to need to go ahead and take this guy out of there. The problem is Kennedy's usual approach 
of being patient, slowing down, waiting for their opponent to uh, tire out is not really going to work because Devin Clark has a great gas tank. So this is a very, very sketchy fight, in my opinion. It's one where I'm having a real hard time. I'm picking Kennedy and Chukwu to go ahead and get the win. I think he can find a way to get it done, but I don't want to pay the minus 200 on it. We're talking prediction strike, however. I believe Devin Clark has already met his ceiling. I believe this man is going to alternate wins and losses in the UFC, essentially, until he gets cut. He's going to be a gatekeeper. He's going to be a measuring stick. He's undersized for the division, and he's just going to audit your grappling. Kennedy, on the other hand, is a freak of nature who's got a lot of upside, who's still very young and improving. I think we could see a lot more from Kennedy moving forward. If there's going to be a play on prediction strike for future terms, it's going to be Kennedy and Chukwu here for me. Next up, we've got Drew Dober, the man himself. Got the chin to go with it. A dollar and 85 cents a share, down almost 5% over his uh, last couple of weeks here. And Matt, the steamroll of Frivola challenges, taking a big step up in competition. A dollar and 27 cents a share for him. This one is extremely interesting to me because, in my opinion, we may have already seen the limits of what Drew Dober can do. And I say that with all due respect. This man's been in the contender circle. He's been around the top of the weight class. He's fought a lot of really big names, and he struggles with the grapplers. When you get a high-end grappler that can take him down, rinse and repeat, that's when he has a real tough time. If you're going to stand and bang with him, this guy could have gold wrapped around his waist. He's a fantastic kickboxer, a high-caliber, powerful striker. So it all comes down to his opponent. We've got Matt Frivola, who's got a wrestling base. He's come out and absolutely banged the last couple of times he's been in the cage, but that doesn't mean he forgot how to grapple. And Matt the only problem with that is that I've got some setbacks here. I've got some, some stuff holding me back just a little bit here because of his chin. We've seen him get reckless. We've seen him get clipped. We've seen him get hurt and dropped. And if that's going to happen here, if he goes out and tries to bang with Dober, I think he's in for a really rough night. And it might be a short one. I think Matt has to get back to the grappling. And I talked about this on my podcast if you told me if I could be a fly on the wall and the coaches got him to understand wrestle, 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 I'd be all over Matt Frivola in this spot here on Saturday. Long term, I actually think both these guys have some upside. You might even want to buy on the fighter who loses on Saturday. I think $1.27 for Matt Frivola, he's got a very high ceiling, especially if he gets back to his old grappling ways. If he takes the best path to victory. I think he beats a lot of people. However, if he bangs like he has been with some of the higher end of the division, he's definitely going to be capped here. But I do think he's got some room to grow at $1.27. His opponent, Drew Dober, I actually think at $1.85, he also has some room to grow. We've seen him up towards the top of the division. He's still relatively young. He can make some adjustments and get back up there. Not nearly as much because he's already a little bit pricier, but I actually think there's definitely investable opportunity on both fighters. Next up, you have got Kron Gracie, who sits at $1 even after a long layoff, two UFC fights to his name, one and one in the octagon, taking on Charles Air Jordan, who's $1.08 per share. He's down just a little bit, it seems. This is an extremely interesting fight. It's another striker versus grappler matchup. It's another spot where the UFC is trying to figure out really what they've got. Jordan is a super intelligent, not super intelligent, sorry, super exciting fighter. High risk, high reward, wants the highlight real KO in every single fight, and he's willing to go out on his shield to get it. You know, his opponent, Kron Gracie, we haven't seen him in a long time. It's going to be very interesting to find out exactly what he can do. But the one thing we know is he's a freaking Gracie. He's got some of the slickest jujitsu we've ever seen. Incredibly tight squeeze. If you hit the ground with this man even once, you really have to play the floor as lava. The thing with him and with most Gracies at this stage is... I think the game has passed them. You know, he's even been on the mic talking about how he wants to see the UFC go back to like one round fights where there's just no time limit and the winner is whoever walks out of the cage at the end. And that's the old Gracie mentality. That's the Diaz mentality. I don't think that really works in this day and age anymore. And I definitely don't think it's something that's going to be successful. He's got to play the game. He's got to learn how to win minutes. That doesn't matter on Saturday. I actually think he beats... Uh, his opponent here in Charles Jordan, even though I'm a fan of Charles. If this is on the feet for too long, Charles probably knocks him out. But I think that Kron is going to find a way to get this fight to the mat because Charles Jordan similarly doesn't play the game. He throws everything in the kitchen sink at his opponent, and he doesn't care if he ends up in a bad position. I think that bites him in the ass on Saturday. 
I do think, however, you can probably buy low on Charles. He's going to be around for a long time. He's very young. He's got lots of room to improve. And especially if this price goes down even to just like 95 cents or something like that after Saturday, I would jump in. I would buy the dip. Um, so I'm thinking maybe you pump and dump at $1 on Cron Gracie, and then you go ahead and buy the dip long-term on Charles Jourdain. Next up, you have got the man of the hour, Mavsar Evloev, $2.00. And eight cents. He somehow is down to and uh, two point twenty seven percent, which is actually a little bit shocking here to me. Mavsar Evloev, for a long time, I've believed is going to be the next man up. I think he's a guy that has a huge future uh, in the UFC. I think we're going to see a lot of him moving forward, and he's taking on a short notice opponent here in Diego Lopez. And I can't even show you Diego's tab here on Prediction Strike because they have not added this guy to the site. He's coming in on short notice. He's unheralded. He was a throwaway off the contender series. I don't give him hardly any shot here to beat someone like Mavsar Evloev. He's got a chin. He's a great technical striker. He's got raw power and his grappling is unmatched. I think this guy is headed for the title and whether or not he gets the title, he's going to be a $4 and 50 cent fighter for you. If we had the alarm, we still don't have the alarm. We need the alarm. Sound the alarm. This is an invest. This is maybe your last time to get in on Mavsar Evloev before he takes off. He's going to end up being a very pricey fighter, and you're at least going to double your money at some point before his career is over. Next up, we are going to go ahead and talk about Amanda. Not Amanda. Jeez, I'm messing, mixing up my Brazilians. Jessica Andrade, $3.37 per share. Her opponent this week is Yen Xiaonan, who is $3.72 per share. This is an extremely interesting fight. Jessica Andrade coming off the loss to Aaron Blanchfield, another fighter who's always been hovering around that top five contender circle, had gold wrapped around her waist at one point and is trying to get back there. She always surprises me at how young she is. She's in her early 30s. I feel like she's been around forever and she should be 37 years old at this point. She's not. So Jessica Andrade still definitely has some years left in her. Yan Nan, she's another fighter who has been making some serious improvements. She's been working her way up the chain She's had a couple setbacks, but now it looks like she's putting it all together at 33 years old. She's uh, recently broken a two-fight losing skid with a big win over Mackenzie Dern, and now they're giving her a legitimate opportunity to try and get into the contender circle and crack her way to a title shot. Personally, I feel like everybody's kind of overrated Jan for a little bit. I know she's very good. I know she's a solid striker. I know she's got decent power. She's mean. She likes to come forward. She's working on her grappling. I just think at 33 years old, the project is a little bit too old to get off the ground. I think she's going to be another gatekeeper type. I think she's going to settle into this top, you know, eight type of role here in this weight class. I actually think Andrade might be able to get her out of there on Saturday. I think Andrade has the back class. She's got the opportunity to come in here and face somebody who she's going to maybe potentially have the grappling edge over, and we know how hard Andrade hits. It's hard for me to sell you on $3.75 investing on Jessica Andrade, but she is a fighter who I think, like I said, is going to hover around that top five and may even challenge for a title again at some point in her future. I don't think that's out of the question. So we could be looking at up to $5 at some point on this price tag. I definitely think there's some investable opportunity. Now with Jan, if she wins on Saturday, if she gets by Andrade, then she's legit, then she's for real. And she absolutely could get up to that $4.50, $5 mark. So at $3.72, there's maybe a little bit of juice to squeeze left on her as well. Pick your poison, folks. I personally would like the Andrade side, but that's just me. Next up, you've got Bilal Muhammad taking on Gilbert Dorinho Burns in the co-main event for five rounds, all the marbles. Folks, real quick, before we talk about this fight, just do me a favor. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And like we said before, promo code FE, Frankie Edgar, for Fight Exchange. Head on over, make a deposit. They've got the bonus running right now. Every $25 gets you a free share of one of these athletes. And I know I mentioned it before. I'm saying athletes, there's not just MMA on this website, folks. Baseball, basketball, football. We just had the NFL draft. There's going to be a ton of rookies coming into this website where you can buy low on their NFL careers and watch those price tags skyrocket as they get better throughout their lives. So come on in, play Prediction Strike with us, and use that promo code FE while you're doing it. The next fight that we're talking about, I already teed it up, though, is that co-main event slot. Bilal is $4.82. 
taking on Gilbert Burns, $5.21. Both guys are consummate contenders. Both guys have been scraping and clawing at this 170-pound division, trying to get that title shot. Burns has been there once or twice. Bilal's time is coming, in my opinion. I'm picking Bilal to win on Saturday. I absolutely think five rounds favors him. I think he gets by Gilbert Burns. And the deeper this fight goes, the more it's going to favor him. As long as he doesn't get nuked in the first round by Gilbert, I think he just kind of takes over as the fight drags on. But it's a tough sell at these price tags because the champions in the UFC, I mean, the most we see is like $6 on top. So like Burns is solid at $5.21. If you've got shares of Burns, though, folks, I would sell. I would sell hard and sell fast right now because I don't think that price tag is going up any higher after Saturday. I do think there's a little bit of wiggle room here on Bilal, but again, it's tough to sell at $4.82. I actually do think he's got an outside shot at dethroning Leon Edwards if they run that fight back, so you might get up to that $6 mark, but there's some better opportunities, some that we've talked about on this show you know, a little bit earlier on the podcast where you'd get a better return on your investment. Main event time, everybody. Aljamain Sterling, look at that, $6.86. That's what we're talking about. That right there is the goal. That's the price tag we're trying to get you from a dollar or an 80 cent investment all the way up to that 686 mark. Henry Cejudo, the returning champion, the challenger, I'm not whichever one you want to call him at this point, because both guys have the belt. And uh, you know, Henry just kind of surrendered it at one point. He came back, he still got it technically. He's only $4.79. It's a little bit weird, the massive difference in price between these two guys, considering Henry is planning on sticking around for a bit. This is not a GSP ploy. This is not come in, smash, get the belt one time, and retire again. He is looking for a fight with Sean O'Malley after he takes the belt. He is looking for a legacy match against Volkanovski and trying to become the first ever triple champion in the UFC. I love Henry Cejudo. He's definitely a guy that is going to fight for your money. He's also been a finisher as of late. This is a guy that I would very much be looking to get behind. Now, again, we're getting in that tough spot with the champions. It's hard to argue he goes up much higher than this, right? We see the absolute pinnacle over here with Aljo at six, seven dollars. So Henry could get up another dollar fifty, two dollars, especially. If he takes out Aljamain Sterling and if he finishes Sean O'Malley, somebody who's incredibly popular, I think he's got a shot to go ahead and get that price tag up higher. For me, it's Henry Cejudo or nothing. Now, Aljamain Sterling, you're definitely not buying in at $6.86. If you think he wins on Saturday and you've already got Aljo shares, maybe just hang on to them, see how that goes, see if that price goes anywhere. But honestly, I'd be a little nervous and I'd probably be considering selling at this point if you are invested in Aljamain Sterling because there is a chance that on Saturday after he loses this belt, he hangs it up. He's talking about getting close to retirement age for a couple of years now. That's been a conversation. He's talked about vacating so Marab can take his shot at this weight class and be the champion. Moving up and maybe solidifying legacy, having a couple of fights up because the weight cut is getting to be too tough for him. Honestly, folks, I think he's too small just physically. I know he cuts a lot of weight. He's a big dude, but I don't think he's going to fare well if he moves up to 135 pounds. I think he's going to lose that height and reach and strength advantage that he's used to, and it's not going to go well. I would consider selling on Aljamain Sterling at this point. If you're betting on either of these guys, if you're investing on either of these guys on Saturday, for me, it's Henry Cejudo. Folks, that is the Fight Exchange. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here today. Again, check out Prediction Strike. It's a super fun platform to go ahead and find another way to make money and invest. Check it out. Hopefully, we will have my guy David back next week. And until then, good luck. <laughs>